Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. It's a delight to worship with you on this January 10th, 2021, as we launch our new worship series playlist, Songs of Life. Today is also a big day. It's our annual meeting at noon. I trust you know how to find the Zoom link, and I look forward to seeing you online as we launch our exciting 2021 ministry plan want to uh, also make us aware of signing up for our small groups and uh, urge you in this season. Uh, we don't know what's going to unfold in 2021, so we're going to need each other. And if you haven't found a small group, just let me know. Uh, I'll make sure that we do what we can to connect you to others. Uh, we're counting on getting through all this uh, COVID season, and when we do, we're going to need others to celebrate as well. So sign up for a small group at our website. Look for this graphic it'll lead you to the many many options some 20 groups that we have some of them are full but some of them have room for you want to also bring your attention to an exciting opportunity to support essential workers to recognize them i'm going to be thinking with you today about can we still hear others and uh, this is an opportunity for us to assure those essential workers teachers uh, health care professionals emergency responders, law enforcement people that are in our lives, that we not only hear them, but we appreciate them. And so click on this at our website for ways to contribute, ways to participate, ways to help put these little appreciation gifts together and to distribute them. I think we're ready to worship God. Don't let your heart be drunk. 
just up and down now I can still hear you Between a few wild rides Surrounded on all sides I can still hear you can still hear you Welcome, everyone, to our new year. We're delighted to be able to worship God with you and begin a worship series today. We are excited to intersect Scripture with songs of life. We all love music. We, uh, well, I have heard, actually, of one person that doesn't like music. I, I'm not sure what that's all about. I can't explain it, but... Um, we all have a love for music. We have songs we like, artists we like, genres we like. Uh, we may have playlists that uh, represent songs that give us life. Now, if you're having a hard time getting your head around this, um, this sermon and worship series, I want you to notice this, um, this graphic that we have that shows us that the fully evolved human being becomes a guitar player. So I'm just saying, um, this is really uh, getting to the basics of life. So what is your playlist? I've been spending a lot of time on the couch over the years listening to Bob Dylan radio. And lately, I have been streaming Mozart horn concertos. How's that for uh, variety? Musical variety is the playlist spice of life. Hey, thank you for uh, sending in your song requests. We've invited your song requests. We're trying to weave those into the sermons that are coming in this series. We appreciate you uh, listening and playing along. Well, uh, in his 2007 book, This Is Your Brain on Music, The Science of a Human Obsession, a McGill University professor, a neuroscientist by the name of Daniel Levitin, delivered a fascinating insight into what happens in our brains while making and listening to music. The gist of his analysis is how music contributes to our mental, emotional, and physical health. Songs are life-giving. That's no surprise to uh, us church people. We know uh, the Bible that forms our life is saturated with music from uh, the earliest song recorded in the Bible, Mo Moses' song of liberation at the rescue of God's people from slavery in Egypt all the way to the end of the Bible where uh, Handel's Messiah, the Alleluia Chorus, finds its text in the book of Revelation. The Bible is saturated with uh, verses, with hymns that have been inspired by verses, songs inspired by verses. We can't begin to count how many of those scripture-inspired songs there are. Songs and singing give us life. If there's one thing we are hearing over and over that people are mourning and missing in this COVID world, it's the ability to sing together in worship, to worship God together in song. We think about our, fam our favorite Catholic priest, Martin Luther, the one for whom the Lutheran Church was named, he is credited with bringing congregational singing into the life of God's people. It's hard to imagine that for three-fourths of the existence of the church since the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there wasn't corporate congregational singing. Luther got that started, and he famously said that uh, next to the Word of God, the greatest treasure in all the world is music. So, songs of life, our playlists, let's get started. There's a new song that's deeply affected me. It's caught my attention. Every now and then you'll hear a song that can make you weep in a good way. This is one of those songs that had that effect on me. It's called, 
I can still hear you, by Lucy Wainwright Roach. You may not have heard of her or the song. In fact, it was only published at the end of October. But you may know Lucy's brother, Rufus Wainwright. He's the guy who sang that rendition of Leonard Cohen's Alleluia in the movie Shrek. Speaking of songs that are saturated and influenced by scripture, I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. We brought back a version of of Leonard Cohen's Alleluia to our holiday Christmas celebrations last month. Lucy Wainwright Roach performs I Can Still Hear You with her mom Susie in a breathtakingly beautiful duet. Lucy wrote I Can Still Hear You in New York City during this very trying season of COVID. One evening when people had opened their windows and were clapping and cheering out their windows for health care workers, the song came to her. One of the theological convictions that we have is that God is revealed in the midst of horrendous events and that in, in times of, of division and isolation, God is the creator of connection and community. Lucy saw all this unfolding. She saw how even amidst all the stress and the threat and the division, people were coming together, clapping and applauding through open windows, community there in the middle of the city spontaneously emerging. People were discovering ways to connect, care, and serve. I can still hear you as as people reached out the window and applauded. That became a message to essential workers, to healthcare workers, to emergency technicians and first responders, to law enforcement personnel. We notice you. We appreciate you. We can still hear you in the midst of all this. It's, it's so exciting what uh, Jeannie Coughlin and her growth group are doing again this month in our Epiphany Light Project, inviting all of us to appreciate these essential workers, these teachers, these healthcare workers, these first responders and law enforcement people from our congregation and those that we nominate at our website to receive a touch of appreciation because we still hear them. I can still hear you. It means that we remember lost loved ones. It was my mom's birthday this past week. She died three and a half years ago, but I can still hear her voice. She would call me regularly. I would call her, but when she'd call me, I'd hear that voice. Greg, this is your mother. And I'm thinking, yeah, who else could it be? I know that voice. I can still hear you. It's a recognition of the 365,000 Americans. That's how quickly this slide that you're looking at has changed. Over 1.9 million people are remembered. Those we have lost. This song flows from a, a grief that is so deep that is felt worldwide, but it, it flows from a grief that's deeper than a pandemic. Susie Roach, who sang with Lucy, her daughter, imagine that, a mom and a, a daughter singing together. It's one thing to, to get along well enough to make music together and then to have such beautiful harmonies when you look this song up and listen, you'll know what I mean. Uh, Susie Roach uh, sang this song mindful of her sister who died too young just four years before they recorded this song. It was devastating for Susie because she'd worked with her sister their entire life. And then shortly after her sister, Susie's mom, Lucy's grandmother, died. Grief stacked upon grief. Waves of loss. Many of you know this same reality. Yet more than this, we also know as people of faith the incredible perspective of caring for others beyond our own families. 
caring for others amidst this global calamity and feeling the pain of the world as our own pain. Isn't it astounding how quickly we are ready to move on, how eager we are to remove our masks, to chase the markets, to blame the politicians, to get back to the bars. Do we hear anyone? Have we learned anything? Who do you still hear? That's a question I invite our small groups that launch now for the winter cycle. I hope you sign up for a small group. If you can't find one that works for you, you let me know. I will help create a group for you. One thing that's true as we begin this 2021, we don't know what's going to happen. And because we don't know how this is all going to unfold, we're going to need others. And, and then if all of this is behind us as we are confident it will be at some point, we're going to need others to celebrate. These small groups are so important and I urge our groups this week to, to discuss this question. Who do you still hear? Do you still hear scientists, nurses, health professionals? Do you hear the emergency first responders like those in Orange County and L.A. this week who were given the responsibility of doing triage in the streets as they responded to 911 calls and came to intervene with hopes of rescuing a threatened life to have to make the decision about whether they thought this person could be revived and if they thought perhaps not, to not try to go to the emergency wards because the hospitals are so full and the ambulances are waiting for hours to admit people. Do we hear what's going on? Do we hear? Do we hear those who have lost loved ones? Do we hear those who are grieving? Do we hear those who are lonely, who haven't been touched in months? Do we hear a grandparents longing to spend time with their grandchildren? Do we hear people trying to make a living? Who do you still hear? Psalm 39, this book of the Bible, the ancient worship songs, psalm means song of worship. Psalm 139 intersects our song. I can still hear you. You may want to pause this message and dwell in this scripture that you see on the screen right now. Dwell in these excerpts from, from Psalm 139 for a few moments. Read them yourself if you're alone a couple of times. Or if you're able, ask somebody who you're with to read while you listen. And then you can read while they listen and as you listen, let these words sink in. Ask yourself, what phrase captures my attention? Think about why that phrase from this psalm has been brought to your attention. And then share that observation with those that you are with or call someone and share that observation. I'll pause for a moment if you'd like to dwell in this word for a moment right now in the middle of this message. Lord, you have searched my heart. You know where I sit and where I stand. Where can I run? Where can I hide from your love? If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. Sheol is the place of darkness, the underworld, the land of bad decisions and dead ends. Hades, hell of our own making. If I make my bed in Sheol, still even there you find me and lead me in ways everlasting. Consider this song as a word from God. Consider this song also as a word from us to God, right now in the midst of our worries, 
in the midst of all the disruptions, in the midst of life outside of any normal, in the midst of our hard-headedness, God's word has broken through to us today. Think of yourself hearing and saying to God, I can still hear you, God. Incredibly, right now, I can still hear you. Your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I can still hear you. Your word is my strong tower, my mighty fortress, and my strength. I can still hear you, O oh God. You are the one that I trust. Your word is my source, my guide, and my goal. You are my hope and my way and my stay and my strength. I can still hear you, O oh God. Between a few wild rides, surrounded on all sides, I can still hear you. I can still hear you. Church, today um, we pray for a nation and for loved ones who continue to struggle with the pain and the loss that comes from COVID. In particular, I want to lift up Joy Albers' brother and sister-in-law, Bob and Marsha Kern, who in, living in San Antonio have contracted COVID and are hospitalized. So we're praying for healing and recovery and quickly for them. And also, many in our community um, here at Atonement struggle with COVID. In particular, I want to lift up Ron and Marty Peterson. They have tested positive. They are at home doing their best right now, praying for continued and quick healing for them. And also, I want to lift up prayers of celebration for successful surgery for Chris Fantetti and prayers of quick and full recovery for her following her surgery a few weeks ago. The response to today's prayer of Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. As we embark on this new year, we commend to you the year that is now past. Guide us in grieving and in lessons learned through challenges born. May your wisdom guide us with confidence into the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, creative God, for musicians who bring joy, celebration, and meaning to our lives. Bless our choirs and worship teams as we await the time we will sing together in 2021. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look with you, healing God, at those we have mentioned in our prayer requests and those we hold in our thoughts. Grant us the courage to live our convictions thus granted by faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In church, now we worship God with our tithes and offerings. Before we get there, I want to lift up that we had a blood drive this past Thursday, and thank you all that have participated in that. I got my blood drawn in the afternoon, and um, it was, brings me so much joy to know that the blood drive, the blood center versity has told us that, that our work together saved over 70 lives. Uh, so thank you for your generous gifts of yourself and your blood as we partner with God in making a, a healthier, safer, more alive world. And 
Also, if you want to give your tithes and offerings today, thank you for your generosity. There is a number of ways you can do that. You can make an online payment through our online payment portal. You can mail cash or check to our office. You also can make a recurring payment through Vanco Simply Giving. If you don't know how to set that up, come talk to our, um, someone on our church staff and we will happily help you get that set up. And finally, we have an easy and safe way to give via text. All you have to do is give the amount or text the amount you want to give to 414-626-9700. That's 414-626-9700. Let us worship God with our tithes and offerings. Good morning, church. I am glad to be here with you. Will you sing with me? Casting Crowns Thrive. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as you go out into the world in this weird and strange season, receive the blessing. May God bless you and keep you. 
May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.